The SVS PB3000 fills in the gap between the 2000 Pro and the 4000 series of subwoofers from SVS, but the real question is, does it outperform the PB2000 Pro enough to warrant the upgrade? Well, here's my answer to that question. Yes, it does, but also, well, it depends. Now, I do wanna thank SVS for sending two of their PB3000 subwoofers out for review. Now, this isn't a sponsored video or anything like that, and they honestly have zero clue what I'm going to say. So rest assured, everything in the video here will be my genuine opinion, and as always, I'll approach things fairly with critical eyes and ears. So I wanna start out this review by going over the tech specs, which I actually covered in my PB3000 unboxing video already. I'll put a clip from that video here, but if you're interested in the full unboxing video, the link to that video is in the description. Now moving on to the tech specs, and the PB3000 features SVS's new proprietary 13 inch high excursion driver, along with dual three and a half inch ports, which like I mentioned earlier, can be plugged with the included port plugs if you want to run the sub in sealed mode. The frequency response in standard ported mode is 16 hertz to 260 hertz plus or minus three dB. And in sealed mode, you're looking at 18 hertz to 260 hertz plus or minus three dB. Now driving that is an 800 watt continuous, 2500 watts peak class D sledge amplifier. And as far as inputs and outputs go, on the back you'll find a three volt to 12 volt trigger input, stereo RCA line level inputs and outputs, along with a USB port for powering SVS's sound path wireless audio adapter. You also have SVS's intelligent control interface on the back of the rear mounted amplifier, but you can also use, and I personally recommend using SVS's control app to access and control all the functions of the PB3000 as well, including things like volume, phase, parametric EQ, and port tuning. Now currently the PB3000 is only available in the premium black ash finish and has a price tag of 1,599 US dollars. Though as of the recording of this video, if you go dual right off the bat, you can save a couple hundred bucks. Now moving on to build quality, the PB3000 is exceptionally well built, which is honestly what I've come to expect from SVS. It's definitely not a light subwoofer coming in at around 82 pounds when it's unboxed. Now I could sit here and go over all the materials SVS uses to build their subwoofers, but honestly it's probably easier and better if I just put up some screenshots from SVS's website so you can see for yourself. Now links will obviously be in the description for the PB3000 as well, so if you wanna check that out for yourself, go right ahead. Now one of my favorite features of the PB3000 is the metal grill. I love that thing. Now, obviously this comes down to personal preference, but I really, really like the look of the metal grill over the cloth grill included with SVS's cheaper options, such as the PB2000 Pro. Now this does give the PB3000 a more premium look in my opinion. And thankfully the metal included doesn't have any weird resonances when playing back movies or music or anything like that. So no worries there. Now it being metal also means it's more durable than a cloth grill. So if you have kids or pets, there's less of a chance of it getting damaged. Now, as with every subwoofer SVS sells now, the PB3000 is fully controllable with SVS's smartphone app. Although if you prefer, you can use the buttons on the back of the subwoofer to dial things in the old school way. Now I found using the app over the past few years with the SVS subs that I've owned, has been very intuitive and a feature I want on every single subwoofer I own from now and into the future. And honestly, I don't even touch the buttons on the back other than to make sure they work when I first get the subwoofer. It saves me a ton of time when I wanna play around with various settings to see what they do. Now for most people, I think this is a convenience feature because once you get things dialed in and where you like, you probably won't need to or want to touch these controls again. But for those of us who have an obsession with endlessly tweaking settings, well, the app control is pretty awesome. Moving on to performance and sound quality, the SVS PB3000s, they hit hard. Now I'll be honest here, the dual PB2000 Pros I've owned for a couple of years pack quite a punch. And with the listed frequency response of the PB3000s being around the same as those, I was a bit worried that I'd might not be that impressed with the PB3000s. But thankfully, after a couple of months with the PB3000s, I can definitely say that that is not the case. I am thoroughly impressed with the PB3000s. So I started playing God of War Ragnarok around the time that I got the PB3000s from SVS. And while that game isn't the most heavy or intense when it comes to bass response, that also meant that the PB3000s would have zero issue keeping up with it. Now I 
also started the Callisto Protocol, and I was really, really loving how the PB3000s hit hard during that game's opening sequence. Sorry, but I got no choice. Coming in hot, boost the anti -grabs. Already at maximum. We're not gonna make it. Yes, we are. Watch out. Hold on. Brace for impact. Now, there were moments in the game which really shook the room and the PB3000s were again able to keep up without a problem. Now, something I also want to mention, I typically run with a total of four subwoofers in my home theater, two in the front and two near field subs right behind my seats. Now, obviously for testing and review, I ran only the two PB3000 subwoofers up front. However, <laughs> There are numerous times throughout my testing and review process that I thought I maybe had re-enabled those rear subs during testing or when I was playing around with some mini DSP settings and Remy Q Wizard because I could literally feel the bass in my theater seats. Now, that's something that didn't really happen as often with the PB2000 Pros when I only had those subs set up when we first moved into our house. No rear subs were on. So the PB3000s did a great job of providing that tactile feedback that I was used to getting with four subwoofers, but now with just two. Now, in terms of movie performance, the SVS PB3000s shine just as bright as they did with games. Blade Runner 2049's crash sequence later on in the film sounded absolutely amazing. Lots of really low bass notes. The opening race scene in Ready Player One pressurized the room when King Kong showed up. But honestly, it didn't really matter what I tried to throw at the PB3000s. They handled everything with room to spare. I even bumped up the volume on a few scenes to minus five decibels on my receiver, a volume I would never really use for anything, just to see if I could get the PB3000s to struggle, even if only for a few seconds. And they never did, which I think is a testament to SVS in both build quality and their amplifier power and design. As with SVS's other ported subwoofers, you can run the sub in sealed mode with the included port plugs. Now, I did use them in this configuration for about a week, and while they do sound good and they do measure extremely well in this mode, I just honestly missed out on the extra room pressurization that the PB3000s give you in ported mode. Now, this can obviously come down to personal preference, as some people prefer sealed while others prefer ported. And I personally fall into that ported camp, but I do honestly think that having the ability to switch between the two subwoofer modes pretty effortlessly is an excellent additional feature that allows for some cool experimentation with the bass in your system. Test them out, find out what sounds best to you, and just stick with that. Now my main listening when in sealed mode was music, with the occasional movie or game thrown in there. Now I did find the PB3000s very musical, with great articulation and transient response in both ported and sealed mode. Now in sealed mode, the subs did react a bit quicker, which is evident if we look at and compare the impulse response of the PB3000s in sealed mode versus ported mode. The subs in sealed mode did come in about five milliseconds quicker than the ported mode. Although strangely, I did need to flip the polarity of the subs in sealed mode in order to match the impulse direction. But what does that change in timing mean in real world performance? Well, bass overall tends to react to changes quicker than it does in ported mode, meaning you get a tighter sounding low end that might not sound like it's struggling to keep up with everything else. Now, that's a great definition, obviously, but honestly, the difference here isn't massive, and I don't think it's something many would notice. I mean, five milliseconds isn't really that long. I had a hard time discerning the time difference in real world content and found it much easier to notice and hear the acoustical differences between the sealed and ported modes with my own ears instead. Now, ported is still my personal favorite. So to answer the question I asked in the very beginning of the video, does the PB3000 outperform the PB2000 Pro enough to warrant the upgrade? Well, here's my answer to that question. Yes, it does, but also, well, 
it depends. It depends entirely on your home theater needs, what you want and what your situation is. If you're shopping for subwoofers and are trying to decide if you should go with two PB2000 Pros now or a single PB3000 now with the intention of buying a second PB3000 later, well, then my money is on the single PB3000 now and buying a second later. But what if you already have a PB2000 Pro or PB2000 Pros and you're thinking of upgrading to the PB3000s? Well, that's a bit more of a tough one to answer. If you're finding that the PB2000 Pros just are not filling your room like you want or tend to run out of steam when you try and push them hard, well then yes, an upgrade to the PB3000s would more than likely solve both of those issues for you. Is the cost to upgrade worth it though? Well, honestly, I can't answer that for you. That's gonna depend on how you wanna spend your money. I still think the PB2000 Pros are SVS's best subwoofer in terms of their price to performance ratio, but if you find that you need more power or volume from your subwoofer or subwoofers, then I can't recommend the SVS PB3000s enough. It's an excellent subwoofer, so much so that I'm honestly thinking I might just keep them for my own home theater. Now, if you enjoyed this video and you found it helpful at all, feel free to give it a like or thumbs up, whatever you wanna call it, and let me know your thoughts on the SVS PB3000 in the comments below. And before you leave, while you're here, why not check out my SVS PB3000 unboxing video here. I think it's there. Or there. I think it's there. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you in the next one.